welcome to the Research Works podcast. My name is Dr. Dana Poole and I get the privilege of bringing to you a very special series this week. I am here in Slovenia at the European Academy of Childhood Disability interviewing the researchers and presenters about their work. This is very exciting and I can't wait for you to delve into this whole research conference series. We hope you enjoy the series. Welcome back, everyone. We have a, another wonderful, wonderful guest, actually a keynote speaker at the EACD Slovenia 2023 conference. And I'm hoping I'll say his name properly because I do want to respect his name. So it's Dr. Ruslan Vasjutin. Have I? Perfectly. <laughs> You're very kind. Very, very kind. Uh, today, you gave a keynote uh, lecture and I would have to say the whole room was captivated by what you were saying because... Uh, there is an experience here that we've all seen on television and you've lived it and uh, it really was truly inspiring. We haven't stopped talking about it. So I'm so grateful that you said yes to, to speaking with us today and we can share the story uh, further as well. So the topic of your, of your presentation was challenges of comprehensive rehabilitation for children and families in time of war conflict. So... <laughs> In terms of where to start, maybe if you don't mind giving us a bit of a backstory, because I know that you're from Ukraine and there were a lot of challenges, obviously, as everything happened last year. But what really struck me was that it was quite a shock that war had, had come to your country. Yeah, first of all, thank you for the invitation. It's my <laughs> pleasure to be your guest. Thank so you. I, I really appreciate this opportunity. And coming back to your question, yeah, uh, as I've said during my speech, uh, we are in a long-lasting conflict with uh, Russia for many, many years yeah. of the history of Ukraine. But uh, most, of all, most of us didn't expect this war to start as mm. an open aggression mm. with attacking and occupying, uh, occupying Ukraine, part yep. of Ukraine. So that was a shock. Yeah. The conflict with Russia was ongoing, but the war was something really new and... Uh, uh, Unbelievable yeah. uh, for us. Yeah. Uh, so Ukraine is independent uh, for more than 30 years already. Yeah. yeah. With some problems and challenging, we were building this independence, becoming closer and closer to European Union, yes. being a part of Europe. Yeah. So uh, getting higher and higher in terms of uh, social uh, service, uh, in terms of medical service, in terms yeah. of social care and uh, so on and so forth. Of course, we had a very... I mean, amazing uh, industrial background and yeah. economic uh, resources and natural resources, That's of right, course. Yeah. So probably that was one of the reasons of uh, the war <laughs> to start. Mm. So, uh, okay. yeah, before the war, for many years, I was uh, uh, the chairman of the board of the Austrian insurance company operating wow. in Ukraine. Yeah. yeah and uh, despite my psychological background, I spent many years being a... Uh, the the top manager, wow. but at the same time, psychology helped me a lot yeah. to build the right uh, management system, uh, sales system, distribution system, and yeah, so uh, it was quite an interesting uh, challenge many years ago. I accepted it, and then my company became one of the most successful. So. Oh, wow. it, it was a quite successful career wow. at the same time by the way i was do, i was doing some psychological practice wow. in terms of uh, business coaching okay yeah and uh, my social activity uh, started when i uh, well, when my daughter was born 10 years ago yes and immediately after i uh, I, I got the information that she has a disability, cerebral palsy. I, mm. I founded the DCP Help wow. as an NGO, at that yes. time nationwide NGO. I tried yep. to unite parents of yep. children with cerebral palsy. So right. that was the beginning. Amazing. And then it become, became uh, wider. It united uh, parents of children with uh, neurologic disorders. Yep. And uh, then later when the war started and we... Um, fled from war and we arrived to Slovakia yeah. at the very beginning and spent there three months. We continued to support uh, families with children with disabilities coming to yeah. Slovakia yeah. and going further. And then when I arrived in the UK, 
we continued and became very quickly an international NGO. <laughs> it's now incredible. Really actively cooperating with the International Cerebral Palsy Society, with the European Academy of Childhood Disability, wow. with European yeah. Disability Forum, Cerebral Palsy Scotland, and so on. Trying to build here this, um, to, to, not to build, but to... To, to be a voice of uh, refugees mm. with disabilities. Mm. Uh, mm. During my endless social activities, I figured <laughs> out that uh, this is not covered yeah. by attention of government yeah. and uh, charities and social yeah. Yeah. Uh, organizations. So right now I'm um, continuing to, to develop this uh, segment of uh, social support i would say so providing specialized integration services uh, for refugees and especially taking into account the special needs of refugees Mm. with disabilities Mm. goodness me thank you so much for sharing that that's quite an incredible journey even the sense that you had founded uh, dcp many years ago and for it to be at a time where there's there's war and families need support but you already had some infrastructure ready to go and then you were able to to scale it is is incredible in that time talk me through some of that you talked about how you how you fled uh, the country soon relatively soon after the war had started or how how long did that take so i think that must well, have been such uh, well, a hard decision. Uh, you know, uh, during first days, uh, as I've said during my speech, we we saw the evidence, but didn't believe. <laughs> literally, didn't believe. Yeah. So it was obvious. Yeah. It was a matter of fact. Yeah. Uh, but still, it took us few days to realize mm. and uh, uh, to to believe yeah. uh, that this is a reality. Yeah. And the final point was uh, actually when I. We lived uh, not far from Kiev, okay. and uh, in our uh, village, uh, we had a military aircraft base. Wow! So it was attacked during the first minutes oh of the war, goodness. Uh, and attacked heavily with missiles. Oh my goodness! Wow! And later they tried to to destroy it by paratroopers and attacking oh. and attacking. And I saw one of the battleships from my balcony. Oh my from goodness! From balcony of my wow. house, so it was like a horror movie yeah so paratroopers are jumping out of the plane others are trying to shot them and so on and so forth and it's just maybe less than two kilometers from my balcony very very impressive so uh, i i couldn't sleep this night and then uh, next day we decided to leave our yeah. house just to go to the nearest village sure. to see and when i saw the ruined houses then it was final point. The reality I, of it. I believed yeah. and we decided yeah. that our daughter who needs special care 24 sure. hours, yep. she needs a safer she needs place. Safety, yeah. And we, we, left our, uh, we left our home uh, exactly on my birthday, oh, the morning of my oh birthday, no. the 4th of March. Oh, wow. We, we had no time date. to wait right. or to celebrate. Had to go, yeah. So, yeah, we, yep. we left our home yep. right after this. Um, fresh impressions. Oh my uh, goodness! Yeah. So for your for your daughter, um, you, you described this morning that she does need support twenty four hours. So she's she uses a wheelchair to to move around. Like how well, she cannot operate a wheelchair, okay. so she yep. really needs support, she physical needs support. support. For all of that. Yep. She can move, but okay. trying to do yeah. something, she yep. can't serve herself yep. she tries to play she is very positive and yeah. she is very nice beautiful and she is very emotional yeah. and she loves uh, learning process she mm. loves uh, uh, playing she loves communicating trying to sing songs <laughs> lovely but, yeah everything with support yeah sure that's why if she has this support she feels much happier of course and uh, yeah it's not only about the physical support emotional yeah. support yeah for sure she is our princess and mm-hmm. she loves to be in the center of attention <laughs> so and she deserves to be yeah. <laughs> she sounds beautiful <laughs> yes 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 so well I, I i wasn't kidding when i see her mm-hmm. smile this is the main criterion 
of of success. Good. Yeah. So if she is not satisfied, yeah. if she is suffering, yeah. if she is not comfortable, mm. that it's very painful mm. for me. So mm. um, sometimes people call me alpha father because <laughs> this role is uh, the most desirable, and uh, I'm 52, and uh, this is the first time in my life I I have so much love to share mm. with her and uh, even with others yeah, because of her. Yeah, that's beautiful. <laughs> So I imagine like safety for her would have been your number one priority. priority yeah. So in terms of I'm tr- I'm trying to sort of even imagine which I'm it's very difficult to in that situation the idea of getting out very quickly you would have had to pick things that she needed the most. What were some of the things that you prioritized to to put in the car so you could get out? You know what? I I'm a military officer in my past. Oh wow, you have a lot of lives. Yes. <laughs> so and uh, all my life I was uh trying to provide uh um the complete independence mm. uh, of my house, of our family. So we had reserves at our home of fuel, of food, of wow. water, so uh, <laughs> of, of energy and so on. Yeah. It was a kind of a game for me. <laughs> I'm, I'm fond of uh, building such environment that <laughs> can be independent in, in, yes. in any uh, circumstances. Yes. And it helped me very much because Bet. we had no need to go to empty uh, shops sure. to uh, look around for food or fuel. We had enough. Mm. Uh, reserves. Mm. So, uh, after taking the final decision, well, we had everything ready. We had two cars, okay, and we packed them full with uh, fuel, with uh, food, and so on and so forth. Unfortunately, we were unable to take her rehabilitation equipment, but we mm-hmm. took one stroller. Mm-hmm. And uh, by the way, it's not an advertising, but yeah. after this, after we used this stroller in Slovakia, in the mountains of Karpaty, <laughs> in Tatra, and here. I I contacted directly the CEO oh, of uh, this great. company, <laughs> yes. Polish company, yes. and we became friends. And oh, <laughs> but, oh, what's the name of the stroller? You do stroller, need to tell us comfort, that. Comfort, Comfort okay. from Gdańsk. Okay. Yeah. This uh, stroller is very popular in, in Ukraine okay. and it's quite universal. Great. And uh, during our way to, to the UK, we used it as a feeding chair, as a chair for learning, as a chair for sleeping, Wonderful. for walking, yep. and it survived yep. and still survived. Wow. I prepared a report <laughs> for the That's company wonderful. yeah, to show them That's that good. this is really reliable mm. and I will recommend this stroller mm. to everybody. Uh, and uh, yeah, so we packed two cars and we went and we were quite lucky that mm. I had all these reserves. Sure. On the way to the border, yep. unfortunately, we saw a lot of cars without fuel. Oh. Uh, in winter, no oh, fuel, no gosh, heat, yes. with children. Yes. And they were really begging for a liter or a couple of liters oh. of diesel or petrol. Wow. Well, it's unbelievable. Well, we, we at the very beginning, we tried to share, but then I calculated we will not have enough to, yeah. to get to the border. Yeah. In our case, we cannot stop yeah. and ask and wait and yeah. beg. Yeah. So we tried to help people from the very beginning by f- with fuel, mm-hmm. some with food. Mm-hmm. Some people asked to charge their telephones from oh, uh, yep. the battery, yep. uh, but it was it was a disaster because it was absolute uh, absence of uh, fuel of food on the way, and the the very tricky thing was that all uh, road signs were cut. Oh my goodness! Not to let Russians be oh, oriented, right. and all the navigation systems was blank without any names of oh, the cities. Oh wow! So we were traveling for many hours just um, trying to remember the, the way, the direction, oh. and of course the flow of the cars. Of a lot of uh, blog posts, a lot of checks on the way. Many of them. So this had already happened a few days into the war. All that had changed already. Yes, wow. yes, yes. And then, and then we spent two days. Mm-hmm. Uh, then we arrived to the border with Slovakia. Mm-hmm. Spent there another twelve hours in in their queue. Yep. And uh, then finally found safety. Uh, uh, the house of our friends not far from the Ukrainian border in Slovakia. Wow, that's unimaginable. And look, I, I think maybe that's a good place to talk about this this concept that you brought up and you talked about uh, talked about today, the time gap. Oh, yeah. It was a great 
great concept, I think, for us to be able to picture what it would be like. Can you, can you explain to everyone who's listening what, that, what you meant by the time gap? Well, um, I meant uh, that in principle, uh, uh, the social care and medical support is available mm. anywhere mm. in any country, yeah. in principle. So any country has system, every country has system of such a system of support. However, uh, in order to get these uh, support systematically, uh, it's not enough to be present mm. in this country. Mm. It takes time to become, mm, well, registered, acknowledged, yes. recognized in different ways, yes. and so on and so forth. So, and it takes time. Yeah. For regular people, well, it takes quite short time because they are very active, they are healthy, they mm. are uh, movable, they are mobile. And for families with disabled children, we were lucky that we were together with my wife. Mm. Uh, most of our families, uh, most of refugees from Ukraine are uh, ladies, women with children. Yeah. And try to imagine one lady yeah. with absolutely immobile child oh. in the queue to the border after yeah. uh, crossing the border not even having a possibility to leave a child for a moment. Of course. So they needed just simple, simplified, elementary mm. support. Mm. And they got it at the very beginning. But then it, it was necessary to spend some time for all these procedures. Yes, yes. So to register for benefits, to this and that. Yeah. And the, in different countries, it takes different time. But in the UK, for example, it takes quite a long time. Okay. <laughs> so, and yeah. you should yeah. have resources, financial resources, right. uh, well, emotional resources to wait. Yeah. And during this time gap, as I called it, mm -hmm. these vulnerable category mm. of people, they need additional attention That's and right. support just to survive yeah. this gap, yeah. just to be able to wait yeah. until they are in the system. Yeah. So that's very important, and that uh, became uh, uh, a focus mm. of uh, DCP Help activities during the last uh, year. Not Wonderful. only these, but this is especially a focus. Yes. So not to let people become disappointed, mm. to help them to keep hope, yes. uh, to, to keep clear vision, and to explain them the, the reason of this deficit yes. of uh, support. Yep. Not to uh, let them um, yeah, disappoint. People with uh, our mothers, Ukrainian mothers, are very active. <laughs> I love how you describe that yeah, today. <laughs> and very resourceful. Yeah. So if they do not find support here, they mm -hmm. will move to another place, mm. to another place, mm. looking for it, knocking the doors and so on. Mm. But sometimes it doesn't help. Yeah. Sometimes it's just necessary to get right information. Manage the expectation. Yes, yeah. manage the expectation yeah. to create some plan. That's right. And then to follow it. Yeah. yeah. Much easier saving energy, mm. emotions and health. Mm. Yeah. I love how you have, uh, your organisation has looked to support people in these really, I guess they're really quite pressure time points because you are desperately trying to find some support. And in your talk today, you then sort of spoke about how the approach for looking for services for helping your daughter, for example, you had a bit of a shift from rehabilitation to habilitation. And I, I love how you described that because, uh, again, you, it's managing expectations and it's, it's I guess, in, under time pressure or where there is pressure, you prioritise mm -hmm. and you look at what that might be. Can you explain to some of the listeners today about what you meant by that shift? Yeah, th this is an open secret that we have um, quite different understanding in Ukraine of rehabilitation and sure. habilitation. Mm. We've got used to have regular procedures twice a year, visiting rehabilitation center for yep. two weeks, yep. year by year, um, having evident uh, Im uh, improvement, yep. uh, then, well, some challenges, then following some procedures again and again, and so on and so forth. Mm. So it was a, a stable uh, life mm. with uh, uh, clear understanding of rehabilitation because all such centers called rehabilitation uh -huh. centers in Ukraine. Uh -huh. But if we take the etymology of the word rehabilitation, <laughs> yes. it's restructuring yes. of something that you lost. Yes. For our children, it's not exactly the point. That's right. Yeah. Unfortunately, they didn't have 
it yeah. from the yeah. very beginning. Yeah. So they haven't lost it. Yeah. So what to rehabilitate? Yeah. And um, uh, more clear vision on this point is uh, uh, in Europe and in the United Kingdom. Uh, they understand that the real need for such children and their parents and carers is habilitation. Yeah. So becoming able to live uh, happily yeah. or successfully yeah. in existing circumstances. Yes. That's why it's another um, emphasis. Mm. Again, having medical treatment, having social care, but being oriented not on to the endless medical procedures, yes, yeah. just supporting biologically their organism, yes. but becoming able to be socially active, yes. becoming able to integrate. Less about the barriers, more about where the yes, opportunities you know, lie. Becoming able. Yeah. Right? So, habilitation, yeah. Yeah. getting the ability. I love that. So, yeah. And when you try to understand it uh, again and again, then mm. it becomes clear. Mm. I mean, the ways and the tools that you use to integrate. Yes. Then you start to breathe more uh, yeah. calmly and uh, be more clear, mm. be more focused mm. and um, yeah, be more having future. That sounds to me, your, like you said before, your background in psychology <laughs> helped a lot in business, but also has probably helped a lot through this process too. It sounds like you put a lot of these things into practice. Yes, definitely. You're right, because mm. uh, meeting mothers mm. uh, in despair, mm. in, in, with frustrated, absolutely. Yeah. First of all, I try to help them to, to be in good shape psychologically yeah. with mental yeah. health. Yeah. First, uh, we need, our children need our health. Yeah. Yeah. We need That's as right. parents to be healthy. Yes. Otherwise, the situation is very risky. That's right. Uh, that's why uh, I try to to motivate them mm. to structure the problem, yeah. to transform it to a challenge and opportunity, to to provide this transformation, yeah. new understanding. Yeah. Yes. Yeah. Reframing and and giving. Uh, people new source of resources inside of them. Mm, no, that's wonderful. Look, you've given us so many great insights and I feel like we can learn so much from that already, you know, it, in terms of what is it that we can do practically to help in this scenario? How can we help you? How can we help your organisation? Are there anything practical that we can do? Yeah, sure. <laughs> <laughs> First of all, helping us to be heard because... Right. Uh, we definitely have more like-minded people and more people in the same situations. But unfortunately, not all of them are active socially. Yeah, sure. Okay. Uh, they have problem, language problem, technological communication mm. problem. So we, first of all, should let them know that they are not alone. Okay. That we are united, that yes. we can help each other. Another thing, to cover the basic intensive needs during this time gap. Yes, okay. For that... We need special uh, support from charities, yep. from NGOs, yep. just to temporarily cover yep. and satisfy uh, yep. these needs. And of course, as I've said, we created a new field of social activity as a refugees with disabilities. Yeah. And uh, on the one hand, I'm proud that we uh, created it. <laughs> on the other hand, uh, it's bad that only now True. Because a lot of refugees, not only from Ukraine, but True. from other countries, are coming to the UK, to Europe, mm. and they experience the same problem mm. yeah. again and yeah. again, again yep. and again. Yep. Yes, they are very strong. They survive, but they waste a lot of energy. We don't energy. have to keep doing it time and time again. Yeah. <laughs> so, yeah. so the third practical support can be uh, to, to help us with... Uh, um, getting in contact with those okay. policy makers okay. who are uh, influencing the yep. process, who can use our experience, yep. our best practice, yep. our model yep. of activities and networking to create new policies to help other mm. people from other wars, from other countries mm. to, to survive this time gap yep. and to become um, productive yep. and, and happy as soon as possible. Yep. 
Thank you so much for that. There's so much food for thought there and I really encourage all of our listeners as well to, to look into this. We'll, we'll put links on our website to be yeah, able to sure. look at the organisation. Um, you know, I think this is, this is something that affects every single one of us. So thank you for sharing your experience and thank you for your pearls of wisdom. I know I'll remember this for a very long time. So thank you. Thank you very much. It was my pleasure. Oh, lovely. All right, everyone, I'll talk to you all again in the next episode. Thanks for tuning in. Bye. Thank you.